let's talk about backpropagation. Now, as I mentioned, backprop is an algorithm that trains the weights of a neural network, and it requires us to propagate information backward through the network and then forward through the network, and then backward and forward, and you keep going until it's converged. Now, propagating backward is actually using the chain rule from calculus. Propagating forward is simply evaluating the network. Okay, so I'm gonna just start with uh, this, this picture here. So um, net 100, is the sum of the weighted outputs from the other neurons that feed into this neuron. Okay, so net 100 is the sum of O99 plus W99100 plus O98 plus W98100 and so on and so forth. Okay, and then uh, net 100 goes through the activation function, so it becomes phi of net 100, which is the same thing as O of 100, that is the output of the neuron. And then the error rate uh, is just like this, it's, it's a half times y of O y minus O100 squared. And here I'm just taking the error on one observation and I'm going to propagate uh, the information about that error backward through the network to help train the network's weights. Now, uh, as you can see, I've placed a one half in front of the error rate. Uh, the one half doesn't matter because I'm minimizing the error rate, so multiplying by a constant doesn't do anything. But as you can see, we're going to be taking derivatives, so it's kind of helpful to have that one half in there. Okay, now to train the neural network, I want to take the derivative of the error with respect to the weights. I want to do gradient descent by, by calculating the derivatives, taking steps in the directions of those derivatives, the negative direction of those derivatives. Okay. All right, so we have to calculate all the derivatives. First, the derivative with respect to W99100. Why did I choose that? I just chose it. Um, <laughs> so we're going to, we're actually going to um, compute the the, uh, the derivatives with respect to all of the w's, but we're going to start with all of the ones that go between the 90s layer and the 100s layer. Okay, so to do that, we're going to use the chain rule from calculus. So I take the, the uh, d error dw 9900 To get to that, we're going to actually go through, the, we're going to travel through the neuron. So it's d e d o one hundred d o one hundred d net one hundred d net one hundred d ninety nine w ninety nine hundred. We have to calculate each of these three terms. So let's let's do that. Okay. Now, one thing that's going to be handy before we go any further is the uh, formula for the sigmoid activation function, and in particular, its derivative is very special. So if you take the derivative of the sigmoid, it's actually itself times one minus itself. And that is gonna come in handy several times during this lecture. So I just want you to kind of remember that. Uh, this is the derivative of the sigmoid and we'll use it over and over again so you won't be surprised when you see it again. Okay, so let's compute uh, the derivative of the error with respect to O100. Now that's really easy because the formula that you can see that's right here uh, you can just take a derivative of that directly with respect to O100, and we get this. And yay, the 2 and the 1 half cancel. Then we end up with negative y minus O100. Um, I can just put that right there just for safekeeping. I'll need it later. All right, uh, let's work on this term. So we have to compute the derivative of O100 with respect to net 100. That requires us to take the derivative of the activation function because... You know, O100 is just phi of net 100. So we'll take the derivative of the activation function. Luckily for us, we know how to do that because we know it's just, uh, that the derivative is just phi times one minus phi, piece of cake. And then again, the fact is that uh, O100 equals phi of net 100. So I just plug that in and I have my derivative right there. So again, I'll just plop that for safekeeping right here. And then my last term, this one's really easy because net 100 is a sum of terms that come from each of the other neurons and only one of those terms involves W99100. Great, so um, that's easy. I can just, <laughs> I can just uh, grab just that term, take a derivative of it, and the derivative of that term, the term is just W99100 times O99. So, the derivative is just O99, and I can just put that right there. Cool. Okay, so that is the derivative of E with respect to W99100. Now, 
if there are many neurons, let's, let's say the whole 90s layer feeds into neuron 100, then we would compute all of those derivatives. Okay, so now let us assume that we know all of the derivatives of E with respect to W 90 something 100. Cool. So that last layer, all of those weights, they're done. Now I want to call that quantity right there, delta 100. I'm going to need that later. The, the reason I need to, I'm going to just give it a special name is because that term depends only on node 100, right? Uh, the only quantities in there is just O100 and, and Y, which I get to keep for free. But anyway, it's just O100 um, there. So let's just, um, we'll keep that along. And it is the derivative of E with respect to uh, net 100. So let's um, just keep that around. Okay, so we're gonna go one layer deeper. Now that we've computed all of the derivatives with respect to the weights on the last layer, we're just gonna go in and compute the weights from on the second last layer. And we're gonna use the computations we did on the last layer for the second last layer. So you can see we're sort of propagating the information backward through the network. Okay, so I'm only here, you've probably figured out, I'm talking about a feed forward network. So all the information, um, we, we want it to propagate forward through the network. Um, there are no backward arrows, like all the information just propagates in one direction. And so uh, you also probably figured out that uh, in my notation, O100 is the very last neuron, and then I have um, the 90s layer and the 80s layer and the 70s layer and the 60s layer. And I'm doing that not because my network has a particular structure um, with 10 layers or anything. I'm doing that for notational purposes because when people when you have different uh, uh, index values for the layer and for where you are in the layer, I just get confused. So I'm just calling it the 90s layer and the 80s layer just for my own notational convenience. Okay, so I want to work on uh, a weight that goes between the 80s layer and the 90s layer. And in particular, I chose weight um, 8798. I didn't choose it for any particular reason. We're going to compute the weights in the whole uh, that that whole uh, layer, okay, e everything between the 80s and the 90s, okay? So um, let us compute the derivative of the error with respect to W8798. And how are we going to do that? We're going to, again, use the chain rule. And it's going to be a little trickier this time because we have to pass through, we have to pass through um, neuron 100 and, 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 and um, neuron 98 to get through to neuron 87. Okay, so we got the chain rule. We're going to pass through O98. Um, so we go from O100 to O98, O98 to net 98, net 98 to W8798. Okay, so let's compute these three terms. We'll start with the easier ones first. Uh, this one is the easiest because, as you know, net 98 is a sum of a whole bunch of terms, only one of which involves um, W8798. So let's just write that down there. And you can see that the only term that involves um, W8798, um, it's just W8798 times O87. So that's the, the derivative is O87, and so I'm just going to put that right there. That one's done. This one's also easy because it just involves the derivative of the activation function again. This is us just passing through neuron 98. It's the same calculation I did last time. Just the act derivative of the activation function. There, there it is right there. Okay. Cool. Now, I need to take the derivative of the error with respect to O98. Now, this one is tricky. Um, because we would have to pass through O1, we would have to pass through neuron 100. But luckily, the answer to this um, is actually something that we um, had computed before. So we needed to take the derivative of uh, E with respect to net 100, then net 100 with respect to O98. But um, this term over here, uh, we computed before, and that is actually delta 100. So that computation was already done previously when we were computing the derivative of um, when we were computing derivatives 
of that very last set of um, weights. So the only thing left is dnet 100 d98, which of course dnet 100 is a sum of terms, only one of which involves 098. And the answer is just w98 um, 100. Okay, cool. So that is it for that computation. So I'm just gonna um, just put all of the information we've gathered so far there. And now we have that derivative. Okay, let's keep going. One more layer just for, just to get the pattern. So let's work on W7287. This one's gonna be tricky because we have to go, you know, following the network all the way through it until we get to W7287. We'll use the chain rule again. We know we have to go through neuron 87. We know we're gonna to have to do that. Uh, two of those terms are easy, as you know. Uh, one of the terms, um, that one is very easy because net 87 is a sum of terms, only one of which involves W7287. That derivative is there. The second, uh, the second term is also easy because it only involves the activation function for neuron 87. Okay, so we've already done this twice, so hopefully you kind of get the hang of it. That term's done. So the only problematic term is really that one. And the problem is that neuron 87 feeds through as input into all of the 90s. It feeds into all of those 90s, which feed into 0100. So everything we've computed so far, we're going to need. Okay, so how are we gonna do this? Well, chain rule to the rescue. <laughs> okay, so we have to take into account 087's input into all of the whole 90s layer, which, and the whole 90s layer goes into 0100. Okay, so take, take the chain rule, which is gonna tell us we need to add up the contribution to all of those different neurons there. Now, computing this is actually not that hard because we've already done it, okay? We've actually already computed all of these terms. It's just delta times W for that neuron. Cool. So then we add them all up, and I've written the sum just right down there at the bottom. And that part's done. So I'm just going to uh, rewrite what I have on the next slide. I'm not going to change anything. I'm just going to put it into a neater format. So I want you to remember that the three terms are the one at the bottom there, which is that sum over L. And then the second term, 087 times 1 minus 087. And then the last one is 072. Okay, so that's... This one, this one, and that one. All right, cool. So that is actually um, that is actually done. And you can see how then we can do this. All right, if we if we've already done it for three layers, you can see how we can do it all the way back to the beginning. And as you also noticed, the L's are downstream. We must have already computed all of the delta L's ahead of us to be able to compute this. So you have to compute the, the derivatives in the 90s layer before you compute the derivatives in the 80s layer. You have to compute the 80s layer before you do the 70s layer, so it's layer. So in order to compute derivatives back at the, in the early layers, you would have had to literally go backward and compute all of those weights in all of the later layers. So that's why doing the, um, doing the gradient calculation here involves working backward, propagating the information backward through the network via the chain rule. Okay, so we propagate information backward, backward, backward until we can compute the derivatives with respect to the weights even at the very beginning of the network. Okay, so now we know how to compute the, um, the derivative of the error with respect to all the weights, so that's good. And so we can do gradient descent. Now, uh, with gradient descent, you know, we start at some value of the weight vector, and then we take a step in the direction, negative direction of the gradient to try to um, go down the slope. Um, now, ideally, we would like our step size to sort of be, you know, uh, optimized in some way. But in, in this case, it's not. Um, alpha is just simply a number between 0 and 1. It's called the learning rate. If you set the learning rate too small, it'll 
you'll take itty bitty steps in in parameter space and you'll you'll never get to the minimizer whereas if alpha is too large then you'll overshoot and you'll get infinities all the time which which can be bad so you have to kind of carefully adjust the learning rate so in any case you adjust you you compute all these derivatives you adjust the w's and then you propagate through the network forward to calculate all of the um, all of the O's, like all of the the outputs for all the neurons with respect to the new um, with respect to the new um, weights that you just adjusted. So um, you need you go back and through the network to compute the gradients, and then you compute go forward through the network to compute the O's that you need for the next set of gradients, and then back and forward and so on and so forth. Okay, so now we know how to propagate errors um, back through the network, but do you remember how to go forward? And I just want to remind you how to do it. Um, the the uh, weighted inputs for each neuron go through an activation function. That becomes the output of that neuron, and that information travels forward through the network, just like that. Okay, so we repeat going backward to calculate the gradients, adjusting the weights, and then going forward to calculate the outputs of all the neurons and the, and the error over and over again in order to learn. That's it.